Now, in the previous parts, I illustrated to you how we can determine the concentration of some unknown glucose samples with a standard curve. So, for example, um, where are we? We are here. We had the standard curve with known glucose concentrations. We measured the absorbance. We then were able to draw this standard curve, this line of best fit here. And from this line of best fit, we managed to calculate uh, the uh, concentrations for our unknown samples. We had the absorbances of the unknown samples and with a little bit of manipulation, we were able to determine the concentrations for these unknown samples here. Uh, we got three values depend, uh, which were derived from these three absorbances. We then calculated the mean, the sample standard deviation and the sample error. And we reported our results here for the unknown concentrations uh, of our sample. But obviously the whole thing really depends on the quality of our line of best fit. And we could uh, see that well, the uh, correlation coefficient was 99.1. Uh, so that's a pretty good correlation. Uh, but we can see that we had a few data points that were not exactly lying on the trend line. And you can imagine that the whole thing becomes more and more difficult if we have less data points here for our standard curve or if the data points are more spread out. So how can we actually deal with that? Well, it actually turns out that we can also do a sort of standard deviation, standard errors and things like that for uh, a line of best fit. How is this going to work? So uh, this is where what we had uh, in terms of our, our data and also the line of best fit without all these annotations from the previous page. And what we can now uh, sort of try to figure out is what is actually the uncertainty, the uncertainty, uncertainty for the line of best fit so what would be the standard error and we can we can define the standard error as how much does uh, the uh, data points actually do are away of are away from the line of best fit. We can also determine an uncertainty uncertainty for the gradient. and the intercept. And in a way, if you think about it, when we calculated a mean of a data set, then this was sort of a one dimensional uh, sample, if you like. So just simply calculating the mean, mean and standard deviation and standard error of a sample that is a one dimensional data set. Set. But now, if we've got a sort of a correlation we would have a two-dimensional data set. 
two-dimensional data set. Uh, but uh, we still would have some uncertainties because you could imagine uh, if we repeat a date at that example, we would get slightly different values, hopefully not too different, slightly different values for our measurements. And therefore we would get also a slightly different um, line of best fit. And every time we do these measurements, we create the standard curve, we would get slightly different um, readings. And of course, that would impact on how we determine our unknown samples. And the reason why we get these different standard curves is just simply down to what we have discussed previously. That would be the sampling error. So how do we actually determine these things? Uh, it sounds terribly complicated. And the, the maths for that is also, I would say, mm, slightly involved. But luckily, Excel allows you to uh, or has a built-in function that allows you to calculate these things very, very easily. So what do you need to do? In Excel, you go to the data tab here, and you would need to have a pack installed that calls that is called Data Analysis Tools. Uh, there are lots of YouTube videos out there that shows you how to install that if you not already have it. So uh, check out uh, some videos. Just look for Data Analysis Tool Pack Excel and how to install it. It depends a little bit on your version of Excel that you have. It also works for Excel on Macs, so don't worry about that. So click on that. And what we actually want to do is we want to carry out, so it gives you lots of different options that you can do with this analysis tool pack. What we want to do is we want to do a regression analysis. Regression analysis actually gives you all the information about your uh, standard curve, about a linear regression that we are going to do. So press OK. So let's clear these things. Um, OK, and uh, what we need to do is we need to just simply follow the instructions. So it asks us for the Y range. The Y range, that was our absorbance. So we, with the left mouse button clicked, we just uh, drag it down. And you notice I have included the label here. Now it asks us for the x values. That's this one here. So these are the x values. We have labels present. And we want also an output that it gives us a 95% confidence uh, level uh, like this. And we could, for example, say we want the output range. We want the output range on the same uh, page here. We could choose a different page, but I want it on the same page. So I just uh, simply say start here in this cell H23 with your output. So that looks pretty good. Let's see what we get from that. And oh, wow, look at that. We get a whole uh, raft of data here. Let's make them a little bit bigger. And let's make them a little bit uh, wider. I want also this one here wider so that we get all the information. That looks good. I also want this one wider. Excellent. So that will do for uh, the moment. 
So we get here the regression statistics. And uh, if we look at, for example, the intercept, it gives us the intercept to 0 0.004, 0 0.0047. And if we look at our equation on the trend line, this is exactly the same intercept. And for the gradient, we get 0 0.0191. Let's see if we get this one here. Yes, we got the gradient here. So that's the gradient. So that would be the gradient here. And that is the intercept. It also gives us the standard error, the standard error for the gradient and also the standard error for the intercept. And it also gives us standard error for the whole regression process. So that's the standard error for the regression, SE of the regression. And this here is the SE for the of the gradient. And of course, that's the SE for the intercept. It also gives us something very interesting gives us information about the lower and upper limits for the intercept. So the intercept of our, the intercept, can't write, intercept for our standard curve is somewhere between negative zero 0.03 and positive 0.043 and uh, it is we, we've calculated that to 0 0.016 uh, but uh, in a way we are fairly confident that the true the true intercept for uh, this uh, experiment for this standard curve is somewhere between 0 .0, negative 0 0.03 and positive 0 0.043. So zero could be a perfectly acceptable and reasonable value for the intercept. For the gradient, for the gradient, we know that the gradient could be reasonably somewhere between 0 0.017 and 0 0.021. And I'm just rounding. So zero would not be a, a, a reasonable value for this gradient. Uh, so, and the gradient goes up. So it means we indeed would expect a curve like that or a straight line like that that goes up because the gradients are all positive. Uh, we would not expect a line that goes horizontal or even goes down. So with this data analysis tool we get a good information about the errors that we uh, can expect when we are working with this particular um, line of best fit. And again, it indicates that really there could be a sort of a margin or a confidence interval here with the intercept and also the gradient has a certain uh, has has an element of uncertainty 
this is the gradient here this gradient can be a little bit smaller or a little bit larger and the standard error or from this data analysis actually tells us uh, the size of this standard error and if our data were a little bit more spread out what we would find is that the standard errors of the intercept and the gradients of course would be larger and for some uh, analysis especially when we look at uh, enzyme kinetics we are predominantly interested in the standard errors of the intercept and the gradient however when we are dealing with a situation that we uh, have here where we want to uh, calculate a sample from the absorbance we are uh, predominantly interested in this guy here in the standard error and the standard error of the regression uh, because we can use that to make a better estimate of the standard errors for our sample and this will be uh, the topic of the next uh, series of videos uh, which I have taken from uh, some colleagues who really explain that very nicely when it comes to a confidence and prediction interval of, um, of uh, such a standard curve. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, hopefully you have seen how easy it is to calculate and get these uh, regression statistics from uh, your data that you have used to for, from your standard curve. So thank you very much for watching and uh, enjoy practicing.